Hello everyone, welcome to the Innovation Lab. In this video, we are going to perform an experiment to know if there could be an alternative method that we can use to verify the output power rating of our e-bike electric motor by conducting a load test on it. The concept of what we are going to try in this video is actually very simple. So we are going to use our 48 volt e-bike electric motor to drive our permanent magnet DC electric motor which we are going to use in this project as our DC generator. Then in the end we apply a load at the output of the DC generator and our goal is to uh, use the load to create a mechanical drag that will allow us to observe the performance of the e-bike electric motor. All right, in this first video, we're just gonna be testing the uh, concept to see if it is gonna work. And in future videos, we plan to uh, use this test setup since we have already built it. We might as well have some fun with it. So our plan is to use it to make a few more videos to explore some of the ideas that we've had and some, some questions that we've received. In the next video, we're gonna be using this constant current DC to DC boost converter to drive this setup to see how it is gonna perform. Actually, this was one of the things that inspired this project. And after that, we plan to uh, conduct an efficiency measurement on the e-bike electric motor and also a, an efficiency measurement on the uh, permanent magnet DC electric motor using it as a, a DC generator. Also, one of the ideas that I've been getting lately as I work on this is to see if I can use this to kind of do uh, a regenerative braking simulation to show how electric vehicles actually use that concept. And eventually, in the end, our long-term goal is to build an electric bike. Uh, we're gonna test it fully and take it out for a spin. All right, my friends, if you like to see all of these videos, don't forget to subscribe so you get notified when we make those videos. Before we get started, I would like to take some time to thank you guys for being such a wonderful YouTube audience. Uh, we appreciate all your comments, all your questions, and all your wonderful feedback. Um, it has been very inspirational. And as most of you know, making videos like this uh, takes uh, quite some time and effort and research and uh, materials and everything to make it happen. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to our channel, you can support our channel by becoming a subscriber. We have made multiple videos from some of the previous projects that we have worked on in the past. And these are very simple DIY projects. I believe that um, you can follow along and find some good information for your future projects. We try to keep our project simple so that everybody can follow. All right, my friends, if you're getting good value from our videos, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up to help our channel grow. That way we can reach a wider audience. As we go along in this video, I'm going to be explaining everything you need to know about this project, the reason why we are doing it, the components that we are using, and the overall goal or what we hope to achieve in the end. So to provide a little bit of a background history to some of you who may be new to our channel and you're wondering why we are conducting this experiment or doing this test, why not just build an e-bike and test it that way? So a while ago, I made a video to show that it would be possible to drive a 48 volt DC electric motor using a 12 volt battery, but boosting the voltage using a DC to DC boost converter. So, but in the end of that video, I realized that um, I didn't quite have any load or any way to actually test the uh, power output of the uh, electric motor and to see if the boost converter could actually drive that electric motor under load. So I was not able to do that. And ever since then, I've been kind of thinking of, you know, a way that I can conduct this test without actually having to build an e-bike um, or electric scooter or something else that, that will take a long time to develop and also in the end may not give me all the uh, measurements and numbers that I'm looking for. And um, yeah, so that's why we, we are conducting this test in the end so that way we can actually get some good numbers out of it. All right, as I mentioned earlier, the concept of what we're doing here is really very simple. So we have a DC electric motor that we're trying to test and we have a second permanent magnet DC electric motor that we're gonna use as our DC generator. And when we apply a load at the output of that generator, 
then we look at the performance of the uh, e-bike electric motor that is driving that load. So now the question is, why are we doing this? What do we stand to gain? What kind of data points are we looking for? And uh, why not just build an e-bike? So the problem is that um, when you build an e-bike, if you really, really want to know the performance of your system, and this is important, if you're building a system, you want to verify, first of all, uh, the manufacturer rated this model as 1800 watts of power output. So what does that mean? So you want to verify that. And secondly, how can we estimate the battery life? So if we apply a given load to our uh, DC electric motor, what will be the overall runtime, which means how long will our battery last? And from there, in future videos, we're going to conduct more tests to uh, measure the efficiency of the system to see if we can drive it using a DC to DC boost converter. In this video, we are starting with uh, a 350 watt generator. If this concept works, so in the future, we may have to increase the generator size to allow us to put more load on this um, DC electric motor. All right, my friends, before we get started, let's go ahead and do a quick overview of what we have here on my test setup. Going from left to right, the first uh, items we have here will be our tensioners and we're going to use them to apply a pulling force on the system just to make sure that the chain does not sag uh, because we don't want the uh, sprocket to start uh, skipping on the chain. And the next component that we have here, which will be the component that we actually load testing in this video, this 48 volt brushless DC electric motor. And back here will be the uh, motor speed controller. This motor is rated for 1800 watts at uh, a maximum speed of 4500 RPM. And uh, you can get this uh, brushless motor from eBay or Amazon. I believe right now, I've had this one for a while, but I believe right now you can get it for about, uh, for less than $120. And this here is the throttle that came with the uh, electric motor system. And we're gonna be using it to increase the RPM of the electric motor during this test. All right. The next component that we have here will be our permanent magnet DC electric motor, which we're gonna be using in this video as our DC generator. This is a 24 volt, 350 watts, 3000 RPM DC electric motor. And I got this electric motor from Amazon for about uh, $36. Right. I know that as you see these components here, you may wonder what they are and why I added them to the setup. So the first component here is our rectifier diode. And the second one here is a switch. And this is a filter capacitor. The rectifier diode and the filter capacitor work together to provide an additional layer of rectification to filter off uh, DC pulsations that may happen at low RPM. For a heavier test load, the toggle switch will be used to deliver power to the load once the drive system has reached a high enough RPM. And here we have our digital power monitors and we're going to be using them to observe how much power is going into the system and what the DC generator is putting out. And what we have here is our 48 volt lead acid battery pack. And this is a series connection of individual 12 volt lead acid batteries. Um, and as you can see here, the battery is fully charged and uh, ready to go. Here are our test loads, and these are nothing but uh, simple incandescent uh, light bulbs that I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna be using this one here for the first or the initial testing, and this I'll be using for the uh, final load testing. And this here is nothing but a series parallel network of 18 12 volts, 20 watts incandescent light bulbs that I'm gonna be using for the final load testing. This here is a 12 volt, 25 watt vehicle light bulb. 
that I'm gonna be using for the initial testing. Basically, all I had to do was to design a 3D printed mount for it, just to make it look nicer for the setup. And also I added a uh, connector to it, just to make it easier to plug into the uh, power monitor. And we're gonna be using the oscilloscope to observe the DC output that is coming out of the generator and we'll also look at it on the load. And finally, one of the things that I'm most excited about to see how it's gonna perform will be the mechanical coupling between these two motors. I ran into a little bit of a complexity between these motors. Initially, I had wanted to use an alternator to do this testing, but that did not work out because I couldn't make the repairs for the alternator. So when I ended up going with this guy here, the permanent magnet DC electric motor, the problem that I had was that these motors came with a different size brackets that are kind of keyed differently to fit each of the shafts. And um, I wanted to drive this with a chain. So the issue now became, how am I gonna make this work? Using the chain uh, mechanism means I have to use the same size sprockets on each motor. So I had to do some research and I bought a few parts that didn't work, but I'm glad I finally found the right sprocket that is keyed to match the shaft of each motor and also happens to be the same size that fits this chain. All right, my friends, let's go ahead and see how this is gonna perform. The goal of our first test is to see if this permanent magnet DC motor is gonna perform efficiently as a DC generator. And for that, we're going to connect our throttle to actually allow us to drive the uh, e-bike electric motor. And then we connect our 12 volt load, which is an incandescent light bulb to our output power monitor. Then we're gonna use the oscilloscope to observe the output waveform coming out of the DC generator. Alright my friends, I would say that the first test was a success. As you have seen, we were able to drive our DC generator to provide up to 40 watts of power at greater than 15 volts and we used it to drive our load here and we also saw a very clean output on our oscilloscope. And we were able to do all of this even at a very low RPM. Alright my friends, let's go to the next testing. All right, for the load testing, our goal is basically to accomplish two things. The first thing is we, we wanna make sure, we wanna drive this system to make sure that this DC electric motor that we're using as our generator can actually provide 350 volts at 24 volts. So basically, is it gonna live up to the specs? We're gonna find out. The second thing we're testing would be if this e-bike electric motor is gonna be able to drive this system at a load of 350 watts. And we are going to perform this test using our 360 watt load. All right, my friends, let's get to it.
All right, my friends, I'm glad you made it to the end of this video. In my opinion, I would say that this test was a success. As you have seen in the test videos, we were able to use this e-bike electric motor to drive this 24 volt, 350 watt DC generator. And we were able to observe a very clean output on our oscilloscope. And also we use that to drive our 24 volt, 360 watt load very efficiently. So what that tells us was that we can efficiently use this as a way to put a load on our electric motor during the design phase. And also that this electric motor can efficiently drive that load. Also, given the fact that we only delivered 360 watts from our DC generator to our load, and this e-bike electric motor is rated for a maximum power output of 1800 watts. So what that tells us is that we were only able to apply 20% of the rated uh, load capacity of this DC electric motor. So um, in the future, we, have, we plan to increase the size of this uh, generator to allow us to put more load on the DC electric motor. All right, my friends, I hope you had some fun watching this video. For me, this was really, really fun. I liked playing with this system and I learned a lot. And I plan to make a few more videos with this setup. We're gonna make a video to actually try to drive the system with a 12 volt battery going through a DC to DC boost converter and we can kind of see how the whole system will behave because that's actually what uh, inspired this whole project. All right, my friends, if you'd like to see the future videos that we're gonna make with this setup, make sure you subscribe to the Innovation Lab so you get notified as we release those videos. All right, my friends, I wish you guys success on your projects and I will see you guys in the next video.